Hello! Welcome to The Corner Table, a podcast about food and drink in Madison produced by the Capital Times. The holidays are a great time for theme foods. Minty frappuccinos with Christmas tree whipped cream on top, sugar cookie popcorn, gingerbread chips. This week on the podcast, my friend and colleague Rob Thomas comes by to talk about some of the things that he's recently tried for his column, Yeah, I Ate That. I am your host, Cap Times food writer Lindsay Christians. These are always such strange and interesting conversations I have with Rob, and this one was no different. Stay tuned. Rob, welcome. Hey, hey, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So you've had an adventurous few weeks with Yeah, I Ate That. Um, yeah, the holidays are always very strong for Yeah, I Ate That. Okay. Yeah. So tell me why. Why are the holidays strong? Well, because there are a few uh, flavors that are sort of associated with the various um, holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, sort of your general fall, I think. And so... Everybody tries to rush in and and capture that. Um, and so you'll get different flavors of M&Ms and different flavors of lattes and different flavors of popcorn and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. And, um, you know, it's so it's always, I think, a, a good time. Summer is like summer is really good because people are like, yeah, I'm at the beach. I'll grab these chips or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. And then the winter, this time right now is really good. So I remember there was a year of really weird popcorn. Yeah. I looked that up. Yeah. There was like a sugar cookie flavored popcorn. There was, uh, I think this is Boom Chicka Pop, I think is what it's called. There was uh, like white chocolate peppermint flavored popcorn. This year I saw hot cocoa flavored popcorn on shelves. That sounds fine, but yeah. how is it different than chocolate popcorn? Like, I guess it says hot popcorn cocoa is on the really. front. <laughs> Lindsay, that's how it's different. <laughs> is marshmallow um, a holiday flavor, would you say? Marshmallow. I mean, it because can be. But see, now that seems to me more like peeps. I, peeps. Like marshmallow, hot cocoa. Yeah, exactly. Peeps. There oh. you go. Yeah. So, so Easter. That's more oh, of an Easter okay. flavor. Yeah. So, holidays are going to be like peppermint. Peppermint, eggnog, eggnog, gingerbread, Starbucks. Now, so those are like 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 Starbucks, right away. Peppermint mocha, gingerbread latte, eggnog latte. They're now trying something called a toffee almond milk hot cocoa. They're getting to the hot cocoa game now, where they're doing flavored hot cocos. Where I would just say it's hot cocoa. We kind of figured it out already. <laughs> we don't really need to do anything else with it. It's you know, a mocha without can, the espresso in right, it. Right, we can spike it, but really, you know, other than that, we're pretty good on. On We're cocoa, fine. yeah, we got that one pretty yeah. much pinned down. But mint, I feel like a mint mocha or whatever, like that's just generally delicious, right. No matter when, right? Um, but sugar cookie popcorn, I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's kind of fun and flirty, and then um, just to quote other podcasts, but the, you don't really go back for. It. I mean, the, the like a dark chocolate sea salt popcorn that's going to be good any time of year. That was another holiday flavor. But the other ones are more, you know just for fun, I think. So I don't know if you saw my most recent column, but. So Starbucks is getting to this thing where, and they do this other holidays as well, where they will introduce a flavor like for four days and then it's gone. So it's totally about, they want people to talk about it. They want people to take pictures of it. So they only make it in such a narrow window that you you can only have one of them unless something is wrong with you and you want to go back and get two or three of them within that five-day period. So like last year was the, the famed fruitcake frappuccino which was like a hazelnut frappuccino with bits of dried fruit all mixed in. And and it was like, and then it had like matcha powder on top. And it was all just a crazy quilt. It seems of, like texturally ill-advised. Yeah. You drink it through a straw and you get these pieces of fruit Gross. stuck in your, yeah, it was just not a good, but again, you know, you took a picture of it, you wrote about it, you know, you played the game and, and it was fun, but it doesn't have to be This year, I, it feels like they, they had a Christmas tree frappuccino, which was just for five days. And it was, I think they learned their lesson because I, I heard about that and I literally thought, are they going to have like some kind of pine, pine needle, needle thing? Yeah. Like those little, I don't know what they call those, chocolate little sprinkle things oh. that they have. Like that would have been pretty clever if they'd mixed that in. But that was, uh, 
just a straight up peppermint mocha, you know, the, the drink itself, which is, you know, I, probably my go-to Starbucks holiday flavor. I mean, sometimes if you're in the Frappuccino, it's so cold, it feels like somebody's punching you in the face with a fistful of breath savers or something like that. <laughs> So the so the drink was normal, but then like we got to the ice, the whip topping part, things things got crazy because then it was like, it's a so it's a matcha whip topping, so it was green. I think this is the only reason Starbucks has matcha is so they can make things green, and then a caramel drizzle, which was supposed to be the tinsel, like a garland, yeah. yeah so and picture the the whip topping is like sort of like a cone, so that's sort of like the mm-hmm. tree, uh, and then candied cranberries on top uh, as sort of like the ornaments. And then uh, a strawberry on top because everybody puts a big piece of fruit on top of their Christmas tree. I was wondering what they were going to do for the star. And I thought something gold maybe. Right. Or couldn't you just like invest in some chocolate stars or something like that? Yeah, a little silver. It's just one per drink. Like like why why a strawberry? Also, a strawberry is going to be heavy enough that it's going to start to weigh that whip down. Well, and just in general, like. Like what happens to your actual Christmas tree happens in sort of like an accelerated version in the drink because it starts kind of wilting and getting deflated. You know, it starts leaking on the rug and, and you know, it's pretty soon you're like, we got to take this to the curb. Basically. <laughs> it's so not going to work. Yeah. So it was like it looked pretty when you first got it all set up and then rather quickly it started deflating and, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I would have liked to see – I mean, I guess maybe like a chocolate star couldn't have been – I think it's supported by the whipped cream or something like that. But uh, the strawberry seemed like a weird kind of last-minute touch in and a you way. could have had a hollow chocolate thing. Some of them can be very light. Yeah. You know, that exists right. in the world. I mean, you're Starbucks. Can you throw an extra a few bucks? To, Come on. Like I said, it's one per drink and the drinks are like five and a half bucks. So Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, you know, I write about cocktails and I, this time of year, I will often write about like pine or other kinds of flavors in cocktails. Oh, right. So, um, there was one that, um, Harvest, um, recently did for their wild game dinner that they do every December. And they did a cocktail with like cranberry and rosemary, but they used in, I think in addition to gin, they used this pine liqueur. Okay. And it was like, we tasted the pine liqueur just straight and it was, it was like, drinking a treat like sprucey you know um and that i think just you know for the powers that be at starbucks like if you really want to go full out for your christmas tree frappuccino yeah just a tiny bit of that i feel like that yeah they're going for visuals at this point it would be cool though yeah it would be cool it'd be you know like i said like that and then maybe like some pine needles kind of mixed in i think would be kind of a fun way to do it i feel like next year will i think la- will literally be an ugly sweater or frappuccino so i think i mean i don't know that but it feels like that's where we're going that's what's happening yeah that's where we're going in society it'll be an ugly sweater because it will be purely about appearance. Exactly right. Yeah. And they'll just try and figure out some way to put all their topping magic together to make it look like a Because like with sweater. Snowman, like you could do something with coconut. If you did like a oh, Rudolph. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You, if you did like a Rudolph one, it would, I think, be Well, there's appearance. your strawberry for the nose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it would be harder to sort of represent, at least like a Christmas tree frappuccino, you've got like the representation of the cone shape. Yeah. At the top. Ooh, what about a manger frappuccino? Oh, that's horrifying. Yeah. How do you represent like the lambs and the... <laughs> Somebody's yeah. listening to this and thinking right now. So You could have something angelic again that's all white or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, a snowman one, it's got to be with Starbucks and their relationship with, you know, quote unquote Christmas. They right. got to be really careful. Well, this is why do. it's interesting the whole Christmas tree because like it's not a holiday tree. It's a Christmas tree. Like, right. Because they've been, they were dinged by... But right wingers buy because their cup didn't have like it was just like a red cup last year or something like that, and they're like, oh, so yeah. So I feel like in a way maybe this was trying to sort of overcompensate for that, even though of course a Christmas tree is a pagan tradition that we've taken over. So which is just makes it better. It does, doesn't it? I mean, that's what and that's what I wrote in my column was like Christmas is a mess and it should be a mess. Your tree is a mess. It, you know, your tree has all these different ornaments that are all haphazardly put together. It shouldn't be like nice and neat and all one color. The Christmas tree frappuccino reflects that. So I, I will say I was at a dinner with some friends last night and we were talking about one of your other more recent columns, uh-huh. which was the quesadilla that Taco Bell was doing that had like chocolate. Caramel chocolate, chocoladilla, I think it was how it was pronounced. Yeah. Or dia. Chocoladilla. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know yeah. how, how how authentic you right. want to go with this pronunciation. <laughs> um, so, but there was some discussion about why you opened it up. And I had a theory that you opened it up because otherwise it would just look like a tortilla. Right. Yeah, it was. And, and, and please, I regretted opening that thing right away because it was, it was not, it looked terrible inside. And it was, I was surprised because it's just like chocolate and caramel, but just the way it and for some reason, one bell pepper. Um, and it was just like, it was, it looked terrible. And like, then I had to eat it after I took a picture of it. And, but yeah, that was the thing, you know, again, like Starbucks, we're all concerned about visuals. We're all concerned about what it looks like. And so, I, you know, if a, a picture of a closed tortilla, it's not really going to pop off the page where I, I think, it, you know, it'd be good to find some kind of middle ground, like maybe a cross section or something like that. But I didn't know until I opened it that it was going to be something terrible. I, <laughs> I think I probably single-handedly killed that product just by opening it and taking a picture of it because I because nobody thought that was good. No, no. But, I mean, but then you ate it. and Then I ate it and it was, you know, it was like a, yeah, a tortilla filled with chocolate and caramel. So it was, you know, it was it was not bad. But it, so the, the promise was, was that Taco Bell was, was trying Twix quesadillas and Kit Kat quesadillas in just in the Milwaukee area. So, um, when we went to see a show there, we stopped to talk about trying to find it. They didn't have it. They just had this thing, which was also, I guess, a limited edition sort of test run item and justifiably so because it, it does not photograph well. It just seems like the kind of thing that you make at home for your child when you don't have anything else in the... Well, and also you think of um, in Madison, the the big Taco Bell news is that we're getting a Taco Bell cantina downtown, which will serve beer and wine. And I feel like they're just going to have cameras in the restaurant watching how people mess with their food. And then that will be provide research for the next items that will be go worldwide. Because that seems like something you do, yeah, when you're drunk or you're a child. Yeah, and when you're like, I, I, I just, I like know. Taco Bell. I like chocolate sauce. It's two a.m. Hmm. <laughs> I have an idea. We are unwitting guinea pigs. That's right. Yeah. No, we're witting. We're very witting we're about very this. Witting. Yeah. Are there certain holiday products that you associate with the I ate that that you look forward to? Like, oh my gosh, I'm so pumped about the candy cane Pringles to come back or whatever. Oh, I forgot about those. Yeah, no, I mean, I just like the idea because I, because like I said, I like the the new stuff best. I mean, I, I like peppermint mochas and all that kind of stuff, but they're so blasé now. Like I would never do a column on that. They're so mainstream. Um, I just more enjoy like the weird stuff and just see what they come up with, you know, and, and then maybe never have another one ever again. <laughs> maybe go back to, you know sugar cookies that are not on popcorn, but they're actual cookies or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like peppermint is a flavor that can be used savory or sweet. So maybe it has more crossover potential. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the peppermint popcorn or those candy cane Pringles, they never quite sat right with me. I mean, chocolate, I find, can do both very easily. And so that, the dark chocolate popcorn that Boob Chicka did, that was good. I mean, that was legitimately good. So- you're you're playing with fire with some of the, the other ones. You know. Gingerbread. Hmm. Gingerbread like potato chips. You just say it. You know that's not going to work out. But somebody's going to try it if they haven't already tried it. They probably have. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that like yeah I ate that um, you know holidays is tr- is stronger in terms of like drinks or food products? Like- well, it's interesting because I I don't think there's anything like fast food that's Christmas like like I like. Didn't McDonald's do like a holiday pie, which was extremely vague? You know, it had like like whipped cream or something in that. But you don't see like a Christmas burger, like a Big Mac with like a sprig of holly on top or a Domino's pizza that has like, I don't know, mincemeat on it or something <laughs> like that. I mean, it's, it's funny. They do they do stay away from that. And they, they it's usually the drinks or, or I guess the snacks that you would put out on Christmas Eve if you, you didn't really like the people coming over and didn't want to bake anything. So... <laughs> So after Christmas, what's the next big yeah, I ate that holiday? I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe Valentine's Day. I don't know. Winter can be a little bit light, I think, until the holidays. Easter, Valentine's Day, you know, just a general like spring thing where there somebody's trying to launch a new product or whatever. So I don't know. That's the exciting part of yeah, I ate that is you don't know what's coming. <laughs> you don't because know. Because if you did, you wouldn't do it anymore. <laughs> All right. On that note, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Lindsay.
This has been The Corner Table, a podcast about food and drink in Madison produced by the Capital Times. Editing for the podcast is done by Eric Lawrenson, and our music was composed by Patrick Christians. You can find more Yeah, I Ate That columns, as well as food and drink news, at captimes.com. Subscribe to The Corner Table wherever you get your podcasts, and follow us on Facebook at Corner Table Podcast. I'm your host, Cap Times food writer Lindsay Christians. My wish for you this week is eggnog, if you like eggnog. And if you don't, I hope you can avoid it successfully. Cheers! Cheers!